from the Vatican City. Well, let's talk more about Ukraine. And uh, Alexei Goncharenko is a Ukrainian MP, and he's joining me from Mykolaiv in the country south. Thank you very much for joining us on BBC News. Um, first off, uh, you're, uh, you're, you're in the south. Um, what's it like where you are, and what are you hearing about the current situation in Mariupol? First, my congratulations to everybody who are celebrating Easter today. Happy Easter, and I hope that will be a sign uh, of real peace in Europe. Unfortunately, we don't have it now in Europe. And in Ukraine, the war is on the progress. In Mykolaiv, which is a half million population city next to Odessa on the Black Sea shore, um, around Mykolaiv, there are fightings, and you can hear from the city the explosions. Um, people uh, don't have water because Russia absolutely consciously attacked uh, water supply system and now people uh, don't have uh, water and staying in the lines to receive some water from the cisterns and things like this. Uh, that is again an attack against people. It's uh, like a humanitarian catastrophe now in middle life and uh, absolutely consciously Russia is doing this. So the war is continuing, uh, especially in eastern and southern part of our country. Mr. Goncharenko, are those remaining Ukrainian forces at the steelworks going to stay there or are they going to surrender? You mean in Mariupol? In Mariupol, yes. Uh, I'm sure they will not surrender. Um, I spoke with them yesterday and uh, I know that they are going to fight they're going to fight till the end. But the situation is uh, very difficult there. Uh, Russia just destroyed, just flattened half a million population city in the middle of Europe. That is a real genocide. And uh, still near um, up to 100,000 people, uh, civilians are in the city, suffering enormously of what is happening there. Is there any help or military support that could reach them? I'm not a general myself. I'm a politician, so it's hard for me to give an expertise in this. Uh, but I understand say. that, uh, yeah, but what I understand that if at the beginning we would have more weapons, uh, such events like Mariupol, like Bucha, maybe would not happen. Because at the beginning, the weapons that we received, there were javelins, things like this, anti-armor. They were more prepared for guerrilla fightings. Uh, but uh, to, to defend big cities, we need more artillery, uh, air defense, aircraft. And we are still desperately in need of this. So I hope that uh, um, being provided with these kind of weapons, we will be more effective in the operations, like, for example, the blockade of Peru. But that's what I can only think once again. I am not an expert in this. We're hearing about the remaining Ukrainian troops that are holed up in that steelworks. What have you been hearing about the civilians that are left in Mariupol? There are up to, I already said, up to 100,000. And uh, the number of victims is awful. It is considered more than 20,000 people killed in Mariupol which is absolute disaster and horror. And uh, people are still there. A lot of people are moved through by Russians uh, by force from there. Uh, Russians are taking people to filtration camps. They're real Nazis. They do the same things like Nazis did, like in uh, Buchenwald, like in uh, other Nazi uh, filtration and uh, camps in, during the Second World War. So they're taking people to these filtration camps. They are watching for those who were fighting. They are making, they are taking off clothes from people to look for some tattoos or some things like this. And um, after this, they are sending part of them to Russia, part of them to Donetsk, which is occupied part of Ukraine. So that's what's happening with the civilians there. Um, in terms of consequences, we heard. President Zelensky last night say that should, should Russia 
kill those remaining Ukrainian troops, there would be consequences. First off, um, what do you understand President Zelensky meant by that? And secondly, would it really be a wise move for peace talks to be called off? We are not calling off peace talks, but uh, there are, where are the results of these peace talks? Uh, it is uh, 52 days of war already, of a big full-scale war. It's uh, the ninth year of war against Ukraine, but 53rd day of a big uh, full-scale war against our country. And all these are so-called peace talks, yeah, they give no result. So I think the president was meaning that certainly they will just kill Ukrainian soldiers and completely uh, finish destroy the, the just uh, destroyment of uh, Mariupol, that will be much harder for us to have any peace talk with Russia. Mm. And uh, certainly we will try to take a revenge on them. And we are quite effective in this. I am in Mykolaiv now. By the way, Mykolaiv is the city where this cruise of flagman ship Moscow was built in 1979. And Ukraine has some carpet and uh, show to, to the world that we are absolutely capable to, to win over Russians. And that we can do this. But certainly we want to save lives of our people. Certainly we want peace. We want okay. peace now. Uh, on Easter, it would be absolutely great to have it. But unfortunately, Putin doesn't want peace. Finally, uh, Mr. Goncherenko, you're, a, you're an Odessa MP. Now, we've been hearing a lot yes. about the strategic revel uh, relevance of... President Putin's targets when it comes to territory. Odessa must be strategically important to President Putin. How safe is the city feeling? I think after, destro after the moment that cruise in Moscow became submarine, after this, uh, the safety of uh, Odessa is much higher, is much better situation, because we understand that Russians it will be a very big problem for them to make a landing operation. They try to get to Odessa by the land. So that place where I am staying is just kilometers from a front line, where, but today Ukrainians are holding the ground. So I hope that Odessa will be safe, but definitely we should be very attentive about this because Odessa is strategically very important and it's the biggest city on the Black Sea and Putin is absolutely obsessed of uh, an idea to take Odessa. Um, MP, uh, Ukrainian MP for the city of Odessa, Oleksiy Goncherenko. Thank you very much indeed, but speaking us from Mykolaiv. Thank you.